Hey guys, Brad here. If you've spent any time on the social media photography sites, you've probably noticed that literally every day a couple of people come on and say, what lens do I get next? Let's talk about that. Recently, I've been shooting a lot of portraits. I wanted to know if the lenses that I already have are the ones I needed or if I needed other lenses. So here's a little project I designed to find out. I wanted to see how the different lenses behave beyond is it a wide angle or is it a telephoto. For the shoot, I set up a headshot, a three-quarter length shot, and a full length shot. And then I shot at all of the common focal lengths from 16 to 200 millimeters. Let's take a look at the shots. For these tight shots, blurring the background was a lot less of an issue than I thought it was. Probably because there was so little background in the pictures. The prime lenses didn't just blur the background, they obliviated it. It wasn't bokeh, it was bokeh in a blender. Below 50 millimeters, I felt like the lenses just had too much distortion. I didn't like these tight shots with lenses less than 50 millimeters. <laughs> In the three quarter length shots, the background was an issue. The 50mm f1.8 and the Rokinon 85 shot at f2 produced acceptable results. The 55 to 210 zoom looked great at 210mm, even shooting at f6.3. <laughs> Wow, you have to stand a long way away when you're trying to do a full length shot with a 210 millimeter lens on a crop sensor body. Guys, I was so far away from Karina that I didn't even test the Rokinon 135. I just didn't see myself using that combination with a full length shot. I did think the Rokinon 85 shot at f2 looked great. I'll probably try it at f1.4 when I'm shooting full length. The 50mm f1.8 lens surprised me. I wasn't thrilled with its ability to blur the background on these full length shots. Okay, let's talk about a couple other factors. I like the 85 and the 135mm focal lengths. Even though this 18 by 13 room made a large bedroom, it's kind of a small studio and I just don't have room in here to shoot those lenses. Even if I was shooting a full frame camera, it would still be too tight. The other thing that I've discovered is shooting here in this little home studio, if I want to do a full length or a full body shot, I have to shoot at between 30 and 35 millimeters. One other thing I've learned about shooting in a studio that really surprised me was when you're shooting with strobes, you really don't need a fast lens. You're not trying to blur a seamless background and the strobes allow you to shoot at f7.1 to f13 most of the time. I use the 18 to 105G f4 lens for most of my studio work when there's flash involved. For available light, or when I really do want shallow depth of field, I will switch to one of the primes.
As we were heading in from the shoot, we decided to repeat the shot progression one more time. I liked the shots with the 210 and the 135 millimeter. I didn't really care for the rest. <laughs> Watch what happened to the contrast when we took off the 55 to 210 and started using the 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens. The 16 to 50 had so much lens flare that its shots were unusable. If you're using a 135 or 200 millimeter lens on a crop sensor camera, you'll probably find you're just too far away from your subject to be comfortable or practical. A full frame camera will allow you to be much closer to your subject. So here's a couple more shots of Karina that we took. Okay guys, now that I've taken the pictures and I've had a chance to look at them, what's going to be my decision making process on buying the lenses? The first thing I'm going to look at is focal length. Is the lens wide enough to get everything I want in the frame? For the telephoto lenses, does it reach in far enough that it's going to eliminate the need for cropping? Is the field of view narrow enough to eliminate distracting background items and provide the background blur that I want? A second factor I'll look at is lens speed. If I know I'll be shooting in low light situations, I'll need a lens with a large aperture. Larger aperture lenses will also give me the ability to blur the background and provide me the bokeh that I may want. If the lens is something that I'm going to be using in the studio with flash, I don't necessarily need a fast lens. Knowing this can save me a lot of money because remember, the large aperture, faster lenses are typically more expensive, larger, and heavier. Lens compression and distortion is another factor to consider. Longer focal length lenses tend to compress the scene. They make objects look flatter, and they also make objects look closer together than they actually are. Shorter focal length lenses tend to round out the subject. They exaggerate the size of things close to the lens, and they make objects appear further apart than they actually are. I'll also need to consider if the lens is an autofocus or a manual focus lens. Using autofocus lenses can greatly speed up your workflow. Other times you're going to want the control that manual focus provides. Another factor that's a priority to me is working distance. Ask yourself if you'll be working in confined spaces, and if so, will that space allow you to use the focal length that you prefer? You don't want to end up so far away from your subject that you're having to yell instructions back and forth, and you don't want to end up so close to your subject that you make them feel uncomfortable. Working distance is one of those things that may actually be more an issue of full frame versus crop sensor as opposed to really a lens issue. Another issue for most of us is price. Can you afford the lens? Is this going to be a lens that's going to be in your daily kit or is this a lens that you need for a special event or a particular shoot? If it's a lens you're only going to use periodically, you might consider renting it. And finally, sharpness. Sharpness seems to be a huge issue on the internet. You will see a noticeable difference in your pictures if you're shooting with a sharp lens. You need to be aware of sharpness, but I'd advise not to be obsessed with it. One of the biggest criticisms you're going to see about lenses is the lens is really sharp, but it has a little bit of softness and vignetting on the edges. But if you stop down one or two stops, that problem goes away. Guys, 90% of these issues are automatically corrected in Lightroom when you apply the lens profile. You can also create a custom profile that you can apply to these images to make them sharp. In my portrait work, I rarely shoot a lens wide open. And I also add a little bit of blur and vignetting around the edges anyway. So I'll not eliminate a lens from consideration because of that criticism. Also, I'd advise you to go on Flickr or some of the other websites that post high resolution photographs and look at the photographs that other photographers have taken with that lens. Make your decision based on the photographs that you see, not on an argument that you're having with a pixel peeper online. By the way, have you noticed the most passionate pixel peepers rarely post photos? Hmm. Guys, grab your gear and go out and do this test yourself. You'll learn a lot more looking at your own shots than you will watching a YouTube video. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, give it a like, share it, and subscribe. And don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below.